Oh, hello. Welcome back. You're the the emissary from our sister city of Namasera, right? Wonderful. Well, it's wonderful to have you back here in the city of Moonheim. I love getting to learn more about our sister city in the forest, especially on such a wonderful time of the year. Blessed Samhain. Well, almost. I suppose it's not quite yet Samhain, but it is one of my very favorite festivals of the year. Now, I'm not sure what the traditions for Samhain may be in Namasera, but um, they vary quite a lot throughout the world, so it wouldn't be surprising to me if it's a bit different. Now, do you call it Samhain, or do you call it All Hallows' Eve, the Day of the Dead? It goes by many different names around the world. I see, I see. Okay, well, here we call it Samhain. It is the festival that takes place exactly in the middle between the summer solstice and the winter solstice. It's the time of the year that marks change. You can feel it in the air, see it in the leaves of the trees. Change is all around us. And it's also the time of the year where the spirit world is the closest to this mortal plane. The veil between the worlds becomes its utmost thinnest, and it's possible for spirits to cross over both directions. So, generally, Samhain is a celebration of the dead, of our ancestors, as well as a time to cleanse away any sort of energies, any sort of negativity or things that are holding us back that won't serve us in the year to come. So, there are quite a few different things that you can do during this time of year of Samhain. I actually just finished setting up my altar back here. <laughs> There's quite a few different things that you can add to make a Samhain altar the most special. Oh yes, of course. I would love to show you. Here, why don't you come closer? I'll, uh, I'll show you each of the different elements that I've included in my altar here. So here in the center, you can see that a big part of Samhain is our ancestors being connected to those that have come before us and that we have learned and benefited from. So in the center, on this board, I have a few different offerings for the spirits of our ancestors. These are called soul cakes. It's a very old recipe. The base is relatively simple, but it contains quite a lot of spices from the season. Cinnamon, nutmeg. Cloves. They're quite soft. They're supposed to attract good spirits. Now, tradition says that these soul cakes are um, relatively simple, but they are said to attract spirits. The good spirits. The spirits that you want to be visited from this time of year. <laughs> Your ancestors. Those that have come before us that we owe so very much to. Now, sometimes we have ancestors, we, we have members of our family that perhaps have not given us very much. Family that has caused us pain. It's possible, of course, for such family members to also try to cross over. But oftentimes I have found that once a soul crosses over to the other side, they gain quite a bit of understanding. You know, I've, I've had actually a, a member of my family contact me through a medium and apologize for the different things that they did 
that they thought that they pushed onto me when I was a child. It's quite encouraging. Of course, that doesn't always happen, but it's good to know that even in the next life, we can continue to learn, to become a better version of ourselves. And over here, I've placed a few chalices with some wine. It's actually the wine that used to be my grandfather's favorite. <laughs> it's also customary during Salvin to include little mementos of your ancestors as well. This journal is my great-grandmother's. It includes some very, very powerful spells and meditations. And this necklace and the brooch both belong to two family members of days gone by as well. Oftentimes having items like this allows the spirits to find a place here. Black is often a color that's associated with Salvin at this time of year. I've got some black candles here in my candelabra. Black, although some people see it as a a morbid color. It actually, in magic, is the color of protection and of banishing negativity. So on Selwyn, we light black candles to both protect us and to ward off any mischievous or unwelcome spirits. Now, many people see the skull as a symbol that, um, well, it can make them a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> they think of it as morbid or dark, but really a skull is a symbol of those that have come before us. The skull is obviously where we house our mind. And so it is a symbol of knowledge, generational knowledge and wisdom that is gained through the ages and through old age, you know, the, the wisdom of a life well lived. And it's also, of course, a tribute to other spirits as well. Some people don't like to be reminded of their own mortality, but it's simply a fact of life. And in my opinion, death makes life more meaningful. Knowing that we only have a finite amount of time in this world, it helps us remember to use the time that we have to the fullest. Samhain is also a very spiritual time, a time used very often for divination. So I have a few different things out here that are associated with my practicing of divination. This is my scrying bone set. As you can see, it's not all bones. Some people have sets that are just bones, but you can also include little items that speak to you, mean something to you, and then they mean different things in the reading. So I have quite a few bones here with different runes on them that mean something different. But I also have a witch's burn, a ring, a gear, small stone and a few other items. When you read bones, you look at how they land in relation to each other and in relation to the person that you're doing the reading for. So quite 
a lot can be proved and described by words. And then of course I have my CV bubble set up here as well. This is a tool specifically that the spirits use to speak to us. Especially during a season such as this. And of course, I've included quite a few crystals as well, associated mostly with protection. This hematite, a lovely palm stone. Kind of heavy, so it feels very soft and light. And hematite is excellent for grounding us, for helping us see our own inner strength. This is one of my very favorite crystals. It's a bloodstone jasper, carved in the shape you can see of a dragon's head. Now bloodstone is a stone of protection, of grounding, and also of courage. It reminds us that no matter what dangers, no matter what challenges or uncertainties may face us in the time to come that we have the strength to overcome them. It may not always feel like it at the time. You know, courage is not the absence of fear. Everyone feels afraid. Everyone feels worry sometimes. But courage is being able to act in the face of that not letting the fear stop you or control you. It's a lovely crystal. Not just for this time of year, but especially for this time of year. One of my very favorites. So there's a bit more about my altar here. <laughs> now, I was actually just about to partake in another little tradition that I do this time of year, if you would like to be part of it. Wonderful. This time of year, like I said, is a wonderful time to cleanse yourself and your home of any sort of negative energy that doesn't serve you anymore. So I was going to light a spell candle to help cleanse the home, and to also sort of cleanse my mindset. Okay. Yes, of course, I would love for you to, to be part of that. The first step is to brush our candle in a little bit of oil. Just a little bit of oil. This is the oil of a plant called clary sage. I'm sure you're aware that sage is a very powerful cleanser, purifier, and it also helps to amplify good vibrations, good magic, things like that. So we'll start by just using this little brush here to brush some of this oil on our candle. And then we will roll our candle in a few different dried herbs. Some lavender. It's a lovely little purple flower. And lavender is an excellent conduit of peace. Of freedom. Of inner tranquility. Something that will be very helpful this time of year. Also, it just smells wonderful. Yeah, give that a little smell. <laughs> it's a bit of a strong scent as far as flowers go. Some people find it a bit soapy, I guess you could say. 
I find it quite relaxing. You definitely don't want to do overdo it with lavender when you're cooking or something like that, but it can be very, very powerful in a spell. Dried rose petals. Now, rose is an herb of love. It symbolizes self-love, as well as love in relationships. Not necessarily romantic, but just a, a sense of compassion, understanding, harmony with those around. Rosemary is also a very powerful cleanser. It can help to heal quite a lot of different ailments and also can help to purge us of negativity, anxiety, worries, anything that may hold us down. And then, of course, our candle over here. I chose just a white one for this bell today. Now often the colors black and orange and purple are associated with Samhain, but white is a candle of purity since this is a cleansing ritual. I thought that we could do a white one today. I do have some black candles burning in the back on my altar. It will help to banish any sort of negativity. But I think that the white candle will serve her purpose very well. So let's begin prepping our candle, shall we? To start out, just get a little bit of oil here. Just drizzle it onto the candle. Sage, as I'm sure you know, is an herb associated with cleansing, purifying, it cleanses all kinds of things, the spirit, the space, emotions. It's quite a powerful, powerful. that our candle has the sage on it. Then put it back here for just a moment. We're going to take out a tray. There we are. We're just going to sprinkle some of our herbs onto the tray. Lavender, the peace, serenity, rose, to symbolize the loved ones that we've lost and to give us a sense of love, self-worth as well. Rosemary, a powerful herb when it comes to cleansing, banishing negativity, anything that we wish to be rid of. There we are. Now we're going to take our candle and just roll it into these herbs here. Of course, not all of them will stick. But some of them will. They will help to protect us as we begin our spell. There we are. Now 
Now with the rest of these, we're going to make a ring of all of these wonderful herbs. in a little bit more where I need it. There we are. To make sure that we have a good mix of all of these. There. And then we'll also be adding in a few different little amethyst stones. I've chosen to use some polished stones today. I have some other little crystal clusters, but the smoothness and the nice weight that these had in my hands, that was speaking to me today. So we're going to place some amethyst in here as well. Amethyst is a crystal, as I'm sure you know, that helps to cleanse, to balance, to free our minds of anything that may be holding a very, very soothing and powerful stone. There. Now, we're going to take our candle and light it. And Now, as the candle burns, it will burn up these little bits of the herbs and flowers as well. And it will help to cleanse our space and also our minds. So we can begin this new chapter of the year on a good front. Now, if you would like, there is another bit of a tradition that I do as I'm watching the Samhain candle burn. I like to take a bit of parchment and actually physically write out some things in my life that I would like to cleanse. Whether that's different worries, different things that I've been focusing on that just haven't been you know, a good use of my energy, things like that. Sometimes it helps to actually physically do it and, and be able to visualize it. And then I take that little bit of parchment and burn it in the candle and watch the candle take away that burden from me. Would you like to do that? Wonderful. Yes, let me get my parchment over here. Here we are. Here's a quill for you. A little bit of parchment, and here you can use this little tray to write on. Just take a moment and sort of think about things that have been holding you back lately. It might be different projects, it might be different people, even. Or it could just be the way that we speak to ourselves. Things all internally that begin to affect us externally as well. So whatever it is that, that is plaguing you, just, just take a moment and, and think about it.
Are you finished? Alright, good, me too. Now, let's fold this up. light it on fire and then I have a little tin cup here. I like to hold it for a moment but it's all right if you don't want to do that. <laughs> Place it in the tin cup and the fire from the candle will burn it up. Remove any of those negative things from us. It doesn't burn in the cup for very long, but it burns quite brightly, cleansing us of whatever it is that doesn't serve us anymore. a bit of a simple tradition, I suppose, but it's one that, to me, houses quite a bit of meaning. This is a good time of year to take some time to reflect. Now, as we actually get closer to the eve of Samhain, there will be quite a lot more going on in town. <laughs> there will be, of course, a feast and also a time for reflection and prayer, however it is that you wish to celebrate. I can, uh, I can give you a full rundown of all the different things that might be happening. <laughs> we do also like to leave out offerings sort of outside the border of the city of Moonheim as well, to appease any spirits that may wish to come in and cause trouble. Unfortunately, the bad spirits can come in too, as well as the good spirits, so we do what we can to attract the good and discourage the bad from being too mischievous. But it's a lovely time of year. One of my very favorites. It just feels magical. I'm so glad to have you here to celebrate the wonderful festival of Samhain with us this year. I hope that you enjoy your time here. Now I'm sure you're quite tired and need to, you know, perhaps rest from your long journey. Okay, I'll take you to your accommodations then. And then we can catch up later, alright? I hope that the spirits are kind to you this solid. That you leave this time of year free of any of the negativity that may be holding you back. And perhaps gain a bit of wisdom as well from those 